Hey, this is Darren Waller, tight end for the Las Vegas Raiders. I am the Wallerus, and you are listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Goo goo ka Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Woo. That's higher pitch than normal. What's going on over there? I don't know, man. Three cups. <laughs> three cups this morning. I'm now. I'm feeling pretty good. I definitely had three cups of coffee, but I also have two division titles. That's fair. We are all in the playoffs of our league of record. No, 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 no. We're talking about me right now. Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, and Brooks. We're talking about me and Brooks right now. Battled for the bye week. How'd that turn out, Brooks? Not much of a battle. Not much of a battle indeed. What league is that? Uh, Dynasty. Oh, oh okay. okay. It's the league on the champion and the champion the year before. Got it. All right. Let's not. Let, we're professionals here. Monday, December 7th. We have a big week of fantasy football to reflect on. Mike Wright is here. He is present. Hey, everybody. Oh, the hit man. Sultry. Oh. Yeah. Sultry hit man. Did you guys know that this is show 998? <laughs> oh, man. You know what? It's been uh, these guys, the producers, the team. Schneider, Kyle, everybody has been working on show 1000. Now, to my knowledge, I don't have any hints. Do you guys have any idea what's happening that day? I have absolutely no idea. I have no idea except it's going to be the best show of all time. I, I know that's true. Oh, yeah. We're going to go out with a bang. Because we're like Tesla stock. Every day <laughs> it's a little bit higher, so every show's a little bit better than the one before. Yeah. Um, But that's Wednesday, right? Show 1000 is Wednesday. And I just wanted to say thanks. A lot of people showing love on social media. A lot of our industry friends uh, have shown some love for the, the, the milestone of 1,000, which is about, I don't know, 982 more than I thought we might produce when we, when we started this. That's, that's fair. That's fair. I tweeted a picture of our original studio where uh, we used a wooden divider <laughs> That I got off of Craigslist to cover the bedroom window. Nobody knew we were in a bedroom. <laughs> People would ask for tours of the studio. Uh, I was like, I'm sorry, my kids are sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> so it's fun to think about those things. Yeah. That divider fell on Mike in the middle of a show one time. It did. Almost decapitated him. Yeah. I worked in the closet. <laughs> Jason, literally. Jason, we took the door off the walk-in <clears throat> closet and Jason had a clothis. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, for a guy who runs hot, I appreciate the sacrifice. So, yeah, it was, it was awkward when I would call a meeting and had, had <laughs> call you guys to the office. <laughs> guys, come, come on. Come into the office. COVID would have well, liked our old office yeah, situation. So love, yeah. Hopefully we're not spoiling what the guys have planned for show for the actual uh, show. You know what? They could have told us. Reflect. Yeah, they could have told us what was going to happen. Let's, um, let's do some pun therapy mm. for the weekend. Let's reflect a little bit. Mm. Yes, I will kick it off over here with... Darren Holla! I like that one. <laughs> Darren off the wall. <laughs> uh, one of Brooks's players here, Devontae Booger. Mm. <laughs> Derrect Henry. Oh, Derrect? Okay. Mm. Derek not yet he. Mm. Yeah, Devontae parked. Mm, yes. <laughs> that is a good one. From Miles Sanders to Inches Sanders. Oh, that's got to hurt, Mike. That's got to hurt. Berserk Cousins, though. Oh, oh, Mike. Uh, Corey made my Davis. That's Ooh. a good one. Scory Davis. There's also Glory Davis. Yes. Might as well give the wide receiver one three of them. Hyde Edwards Hilaire. Clyde Edwards Beware. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Baker's Dozen Mayfield. Okay, he played very well. Get sicky with it. Oh, ooh, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> <laughs> Jason, you got to take the last two there in your wheelhouse. All right, we've got David <laughs> Montgomery and David Montgomery. <sighs> Look, Jason is the resident toot tutor in so more ways than one. <laughs> um, but I w Nothing gives us – I'm happy I won two division titles in the two leagues that I care about. I'm happy that Brooks was defeated and I have the bye week. I'm. We're all much happier when what we say in this show 
works out for the Foot Clan. Mm -hmm. And I love reveling in e each of your failures equally. Oh, yeah. Whether it's Jason, it's sure. you. Sometimes it's you, Mike, either one. Sure. The Corey Davis start of the week call by Mike, the fantasy hitman right, is one Cheers. of the best calls that has ever happened on this show because of multiple reasons. One, Corey Davis is currently the wide receiver one on the week. The wide receiver <laughs> one. <laughs> Baby. So it doesn't get better than that. Nice. Um, and the second reason is is I, I really didn't believe it. <laughs> I, I didn't believe it when he made the call. Adam Humphreys was coming back, and I, I just got to give you props. That was an incredible Thank call. You. And some of the other starts of the week, I know Jason went four for four. David Montgomery, mm -hmm. my start of the week is the is the running back one on the week. It worked out well. Hopefully, uh, for all of you out there, I will tell you Clyde Edwards Lair was not any of our starts of the week, and that was really difficult for fantasy players. Um, but... Ugh. Quite a weekend. That Tyreek Hill play, just to speak to last night. <laughs> you ever seen a play where he caught a touchdown and nobody knows it? That the player had no... I've never seen a player catch a ball and have no idea he caught it. That's that's a first. He had no idea he caught a ball that he caught. How and does that happen? How? Do, what, what makes no sense to me, we've talked about this uh, uh, before on the show, but... How every team is lacking this person, where all they do, all they do is they are ready for challenges. They watch every play and, and get immediately to the replay and make sure, do we need to challenge this? And you get that call down to the head coach. And they also are up there with the, the, the analytic sheet that says, this is how we need to manage the clock. At the end of the half. I, I mean, think there, there should teams, be. They do have that. No, they clearly do not. There, there needs to be a dedicated person, and that's all they do. That's it. I, I really believe that, most teams have that, but the Chiefs might not be on that list. I think that, that if that person was employed by the Chiefs, they would not have seen that play. Nobody. When the actual player when who he wakes did up it upset or gets up upset has no idea he caught it. The replay, I mean, watching it live, it didn't seem like it happened until all of a sudden, right before they're about to punt, some replays like, oh my goodness, that ball didn't touch the ground. Uh, if you don't make the playoffs because of that play, are you able to submit that into evidence to your commissioner and they let you in? No, no, no. I really did make the playoffs. <laughs> they punted. It's no good. Yeah. Oh, they punted so fast. <laughs> as soon as they realized that you looked up and the ball was in the air. So uh, you can follow the show on Twitter at the FF Ballers. Jason is at Jason FFL. Uh, at FF Hitman, that's how you follow Mike, who's on a, a very nice hot streak with picks right now. I'm at Andy Holloway, and the fantasyfootballers.com is the website. Uh, join the foot.com, the fantasy football community. So much to talk about. Weekly Rewind. All right. Miles Gaskin, David Johnson oh. activated. They both played. Gas man is back. Yeah, and David Johnson got, got back into the end zone. Drew Brees could return in week 14 just in time for your fantasy playoffs and to throw a whole cloud of wow. what's going to happen into the could atmosphere. Could I mean, return. It, yeah, could. Hopefully will. I mean, it would. I think everyone out there except for someone using Taysom Hill at quarterback would be happy. The, the Michael Thomas manager, Alvin Kamara manager, uh, Jared Cook. I know he got a touchdown this last week, but obviously, we, you know, I would rather have Drew Brees slinging the rock back there. Phillip Rivers apparently needs offseason surgery. He played well, though. So, uh, <laughs> injury does not slow down Phillip Rivers. You can't slow down immobile. Like, the, like physically, you can't get slower than stand there. The only way that he wouldn't be able to do it is if he lost a limb. Like, you no longer have... Uh, you know, you we we lost you below the knees, so now you you know you're gonna have to go on IR. Otherwise, didn't he play a whole game yes. with a torn ACL? He played the AFC Championship game with a torn ACL. He's like, that's that's no problem. I don't move. Yeah. That you don't need them. Don't need the legs. Uh, Alexander Madison had an appendectomy. He's gonna be out for a couple of weeks, most likely. Devonta Freeman was placed on the COVID uh, nineteen reserve list. And so Wayne Gallman continues to be a fantasy asset he for the division good. leading. Wayne Gallman runs Giants. with passion. 
Slowly, with passion, yeah. I I don't know, man. I think he looks strong when he's running. No, I, I agree with you. I, it never made sense to me to bring in Devonta Freeman when Gallman was totally capable of producing the same result, and he's been valuable. This was rough. Oh, He this. is not eternal. He is not all, as long as I believe in him. No. Frank Gore exited on the second play with a concussion. <clears throat> believe it or not, Jason, that means you won the Jonathan Taylor Frank Gore bet because Gore did not play. Hmm. Jonathan Probably would have won it anyway. Yeah, he had a good game. Well, but, uh, he, but here's here's the thing, though. Here is the the real uh, squeeze lemon right in your paper cut. Ty Johnson, the backup running back, went 22 for 104 and a touchdown. Josh Adams, another backup running back, was 8 for 74. Like Frank Frank Gore was going to have a fine fantasy game. A spectacular game. day. Oh, it's brutal. Joshua Kelly, ankle injury, did not return against the Patriots, so Eckler, Balazs handled all the work there. Uh, Lamar Jackson, expected to be active and start tomorrow, Tuesday Night Football.com. And RG3 is on injured reserve, so it will be Lamar Jackson with Trace McSorley as the backup. Mark Ingram, J.K. Dobbins both activated from the COVID list. They're going to play. Mark Andrews is not expected to be back out there. I don't think anybody was planning on having Mark Andrews, so you played a different tight end this week. Hopefully. Any other bits of news, notes, information? Brooks, I you got would, anything going on? I would say one other big piece of news is the, and we don't know if this will continue forward, but the benching of Carson Wentz uh, for Jalen Hurts, sure. who came in and looked way better yes. than Carson yeah. Wentz. We were watching the game and saying, they have to declare him the starter next week, right? But that, that is a... Hard thing to do when you look at the amount of money owed to Carson Wentz every single game for the next, like, three years, fully guaranteed next season as one of the highest-paid quarterbacks in the league. That's that's hard to say, take a seat. Yeah, what do they do? They should say, take a seat <laughs> and get your mind right. Yeah, it'll be interesting, though, because generally speaking, when you bring that back up in, they have a nice first game. It'll be... It's the next one when people game plan against you and you have to adjust to NFL defenses that will sure. be. The hard part is, though, for for making that decision, their offense has looked completely inept for a few weeks now. And it wasn't – Jalen Hurst didn't come in and look, oh, he's adequate. The offense has started to get things going. No, they were immediately better, and they almost caught up to the Green Bay Packers. It was a game with the last couple minutes left. I know that part of that was Jalen Rager uh, with a huge punt return, but that's all part of it, man. The, the spark of a team feeling like they can actually win again, it changes everything. With oh, I, that I have no doubt he'll be the starter for the next game. For Hertz, oh, you do? Hurts. I think Hurts will be the starter. Yeah, I mean, he should be. That defense is good. They're not like an okay defense. Their defense is good. They just have seen seemed bad because – when the offense keeps turning the ball over so much and you put your defense on the field at all times and in bad positions, you, you end up giving up a lot of points. But I, I think if you had a quarterback that could move the ball, the Eagles are not a bad team. Yeah, and it's it, it, to Mike's point, it's everything on offense was terrible for the Eagles for weeks. This is If you're wearing a pair of pants, it's just covered in holes and, and it's disgusting. And you, you just have to put on any regular pair of pants – you're like, oh. And it's like, man, this is nice. Check out these slacks. <laughs> uh, all right. <laughs> look, the Giants are leading the division at 5-7. and seven. The, the the Eagles are 3-8. and eight. They, are not, they are not buried yet. No. <laughs> so Do you guys think they go back to wins? I, I, I have no idea, man. I think because of what you said, the success they had over the second half, and it will, it will make Jalen Hurts interesting. He is a mobile quarterback. He, oh, for he, fantasy? For fantasy, will yes. make him very interesting. Extremely. For Jason's champ champ team in Dynasty. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, oh, baby. <laughs> so let's uh, talk some studs. This week's Fantasy Stud Muffins. Oh, Derek Carr. <laughs> oh, how's it feel, Andy? Andy is locking his mouth shut. Uh, it, it, kudos to Andy. That was his start of the week. Um, last week. And uh, Derek Carr went hamburger. You could see, and this is what he. Oh, I mean, he's eating burgers all over uh, the burgers field. Burgers everywhere. It's not fair. I mean, Send in the car. no, 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 no. 
<laughs> no. Oh, that was fantastic. Well played, Owl. Uh, <sighs> it, it is deserved, man. 380 passing yards, three passing touchdowns. Greg Williams. He had a rushing touch. Oh, Greg Williams. Don't, do not get me started I know. There's on nobody Greg Mike dislikes more. I will, t- I will tilt off the planet if we start talking about Greg Williams. Derek Carr, we... <laughs> we know. We said it here's last the problem. week This on is the paper. problem with fantasy football is we felt like we could not fully endorse it, but you knew he was going to have a good game. He's playing against the Jets. You knew he was going to have a good game. He should have had an okay game. He should have had 302 because right. that last play... Oh, it should never have happened. That but is Greg accurate. Williams, the defensive coordinator for the Jets. That was the, the he, also almost upset of the week. Excellent pick, Andy. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> you should pick them for me more often. Uh, no, I mean, on paper, we said it. The The problem was going to be, did you have the guts to lose with Derek Carr twice in a row? Nobody mm-hmm. had that. Now, the Raiders barely have that. There were people that lost with Derek Carr last week and, and then- lost – to Derek yes. Carr this week because whoever signed him didn't experience last oh, week. Oh, man. And that, that, is, that is standing with a wide stance for that <laughs> kick. I mean, you are just oh, – your legs you are – both of them. That <laughs> is the car running over you forwards yes. and backwards. Yeah. Baker Mayfield played his – one of the most impressive games in his young career, 25 for 33, thir- 334 and 4. Almost all in the first half. That was the franchise record points scored for the Browns in a half. The wow. first half of that game. Browns are nine and three. Their playoff chances sit at ninety seven percent. Big break an eighteen year run. Baker is maddening because the this is who he can be. Like we saw glimpses of this in his rookie season, and then the second year was just so terrible that it was like talk about like Derek Carts, it's hard to re endorse somebody who has just hurt you over and over and over. But this, this, when Baker has confidence and things are clicking, he can be an excellent quarterback. He is a momentum quarterback, yes, too. Yes, very Absolutely. much. And since I'm feeling benevolent to, to division titles today, I'm going to give Jason a lot of credit because he's brought up the fact that Baker's potential was muddied literally by three rainy games where you didn't get to see. There was no possible upside in those games, so we mm-hmm. didn't get to see Baker's upside even in a good matchup because of the rain and the and the weather and here was an opportunity against a really bad defense in Tennessee and he took full advantage yeah Tennessee's defense stinks they're somewhat a target the rest of the way through the playoffs Ryan Tannehill ended up in the same game 389 and three Jason started the week there against Cleveland so uh huge huge week for Tannehill Jacksonville Detroit Green Bay the next three weeks for Tannehill Matthew Stafford had a nice week, four oh two and three. Always, you know, he's he's like he's like a likable Derek Carr. Where when you lean on him, he might not perform for you, but you you kind of give him more of the benefit of the doubt than Derek Carr. Well, we'll say this. Uh the the nice thing about Stafford is that this came at a time when they released the head coach, the defensive minded Matt Patricia, and you know, we saw this kind of happen with Deshaun they re- Watson. They released him. Yes, we back into the wild. Uh, <laughs> Go saw, on there, buddy. We saw it happen with Deshaun Watson, where he was kind of mediocre for fantasy purposes. They really weren't letting him go hog wild until Bill O'Brien got out of the way, and they said, "Oh, he's our best player. Let's just let him. Let's let him help us win games." So hopefully, this is the beginning of a trend for Stafford. Happy to report, our editor in chief extraordinaire Kyle the Borgogan now understands the send in the car drop. By the way. Oh yeah, that's Be- true. Because he saw Die Hard for the first time in his in his life, which is it makes no sense. You should be seeing that annually. Yes. Yeah. Yes. All right, uh, Jared Goff. No. Announcing. Took care of the Arizona Cardinals. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Introducing <laughs> Jared Gear. Uh, yeah, the Cardinals. They're a nice matchup. Yeah. Seventy nine percent of his passes were complete. Taysom Hill, nice fantasy day as well. Aaron Rodgers, as usual. Kirk Cousins, we talked about it earlier. Kirk Cousins is fully on fire right now. When you can throw the ball to two players that are always open in Justin Jefferson and and uh, Adam Thielen, the sky's the limit for yeah. Kirk Cousins. And they're, they're in the playoff picture right now. Yeah, but what about the fantasy playoff picture of Tampa Bay, Chicago, and New Orleans? 
not not as good. I mean, yeah. we we thank you for your service for my fantasy team, Kirk. I Go into be, the wild. Yes, I will be playing someone else. <laughs> yeah, that seems that seems true. Although uh, Tamp, I know, is pretty vulnerable to opposing fantasy wide receivers. So at least Jefferson and Thielen, I doubt they're leaving your lineup anyways. It's one of those weeks for Cam Newton. <laughs> guys, guys, he passed for sixty nine yards. Oh, <laughs> um, and nice. he, and it and it looked like. How does this happen? So I, he scored twice on the ground. I would be – when you play Cam Newton, just you're playing him hoping for a goal line carry. Cam Newton has thrown under 100 passing yards three times. In two, two straight weeks. Yes. That's – Two straight weeks. In two straight weeks. They won 45-0. to zero. Yeah. He is this a, is, this he's is a, a weird he's team. Throwing, he's a quarter of a quarterback. He's throwing for uh, – very few yards, running the football into the end zone, and there you go. Yep. And Damian Harris didn't get that goal line carry, unfortunately. Nope. All right. Uh, we, we have some running back studs to talk about. But before we do that, very excited to tell you about today's sponsor. We're talking about Fight Camp. Fight Camp. Pow, pow. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, this is a workout that keeps you engaged, learning, excited, motivated, Fight Camp brings the boxing gym to your living room. I couldn't like this more. It, workouts that are competitive, sports-based, that's where it is at. Uh, I can tell you, uh, Al Borland, Mike, and myself, we played some pickleball, some ferocious pickleball. Mm -hmm. It's just such a better workout when it's competitive, engaging, and Fight Camp, that's what that is. They provide all the gear and the top trainers. You get to learn from six highly qualified trainers, uh, no problem if you're new to boxing. They have a 12-week starter program that teaches you the fundamentals. 400 different workouts, even great for kids. So you want to get them engaged uh, with the workout and have a little fun with that. It's awesome. And it's a perfect holiday gift. They offer flexible financing for as low as 0% APR and $0 down. Right now is a limited time holiday offer. You get free shipping and a gift valued up to $109 with every Fight Camp package. Just go to, fight, uh, go to join Fight Camp. Dot com. Join fightcamp.com slash footballers. That's right. Free shipping and a gift valued up to $109 with your purchase. Bring an authentic boxing and kickboxing gym into your home with Fight Camp. And to get your free gift, you go to joinfightcamp.com slash footballers. Foot Clan, we want to thank Simply Safe for sponsoring this show. You know about Simply Safe, the home security. is It's the best home security that you can get. And right now, you can get a huge holiday sale. 40% off any Simply Safe system and a free security camera. Recently, Simply Safe won, uh, look, US News and World Report called it the best home security of 2020. The system has an arsenal of sensors, cameras that protect every inch of your home, and you get to set it up. You get to set it up yourself, and it takes about 30 minutes. It's super easy. And then Simply Safe security specialists, they take over, they're monitoring your home around the clock, and they are ready to send emergency help the moment there's an alarm look we have back one of our producers brooks sir drips a lot back yes. there just yeah. just gems i mean like the the cold storage of bitcoin that brooks has yeah in his in his home i don't know how he has room to do anything yeah, we else. don't even pay him he's one of the wealthiest men alive yeah he does this for fun yeah and he, but he protects all that stuff at his home with simply safe and we protect our studio and, and everything here as well we love the company. We've used them for years. And you can check this out. Get 40% off Simply Safe plus a free security camera today by visiting simplysafe.com slash footballers. Go today. That's simplysafe.com slash footballers. Simplysafe.com slash footballers. You remember when he used to wear his grill every day? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I do. We, I, had to, we were intimidated. We had to ask him to. Oh, it's so sparkly. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it was blinding. Yeah, like. What that thing's like two hundred fifty thousand dollars, Brooks. It's really over the top. Yeah, keep yeah. it safe. Now nah, keep it ho at home. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. keep give it at home. That's this, just that's just for the fiance. It's just it's in a bowl right by the front door. So every time he walks in, he, he just puts, puts it, it in. right. This right is back. my home grill, not my work <laughs> grill. That's right. Thank you, Brooks. Running back studs, David Montgomery. Oh, Your star baby. of the week. Yeah, seventeen for seventy-two, two touchdowns. And he even, he even gave up a goal line touchdown to Court Darrell. He did. And his fantasy playoffs look mighty nice, especially week one against Houston next week. 
Start your David Montgomery moving forward. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that the, last week we probably had no more frequent question than player X versus David Montgomery, and nice to see him perform in a big he, way. He has the seventh most running back receptions. Like the, you, we weren't sure back in the day when, when Tariq Cohen, I mean, that feels like a thousand years ago, but Tariq Cohen unfortunately went down with the injury. You could you would think that Montgomery would see more passing work, but it has come to fruition and it has really helped make him safe. And now we have some upside with these matchups. Yep, absolutely. Aaron Jones, huge week. Finally saw another monster Aaron Jones week with that <laughs> crazy was, long run. It was one play. I mean, that how long was that touchdown? It was 70-something 70, 70 yards, yeah. and he was 15 for 130 with a touchdown. Yeah, but he's got the talent to do it. And if yes. you watch that play, it was, you know, shades of Beast Quake. Not not as cool, but just had, oh, definitely. had 18 players, yes. at, and there's only 11 on the field. He broke 18 tackles somehow. Um, it was it was really crazy. But he, uh, missed, he missed two games due to injury this year. But if you look at his consistency charts over at Join the Foot, mm-hmm. He's not been outside the top 24 any week. I mean, despite any fears or worries about Jamal Williams, the last two weeks or three weeks, he's got two top 10 finishes. So this is just... Yeah, you, you whine when you see Jamal Williams on the field, and then you cry when that takes the work away, and you're like, oh, man, he's the running back 20. He, he doesn't hurt you. He 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 just doesn't always have the monster game. He had it this week, though. But that was unlike last year. Last year's number two overall finish might have actually been less helpful to your team than this year's performance. He's the only running back inside the top 24 every week that he's played. All right, Jonathan Taylor. This uh, let's, let's work through Jonathan Taylor. Thir he ended up 13 for 91 in this game. Three targets. That's where he scored his touchdown. Halfway through the game, he had three carries but he had a monster week, and he's got two straight weeks in a row where he's been good. Snaps, Taylor led, 48%. Hines, 33%. Wilkins, 19%. Las Vegas, you start him. Houston, you start him. Championship week against Pittsburgh, that might be a question mark. But right sure. now, Taylor has moved himself into every week start. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I he, he gets enough volume even though he doesn't get the volume that you want. It, it, it stinks when you see Wilkins on the field and when you see uh, Hines running ahead of him. But, you know, this, this, is a, this is a good overall offense. He is a good enough player, 130 yards and a touchdown. He can get the job done. He, he kind of reminds me of what it's like to play Kareem Hunt this year, where it might be a little rocky, That's fair. confusing drive to drive, but more often than not, statistically, he's worth playing. And so... Uh, and it started the week last week, right? Well, yeah, he didn't and play. Then, and Jason bet on him this week, but so it came the, through in a huge way. We've seen his his running back share get back to a healthy margin where you had those three weeks after the bye, 31% of the carries, 32, 26. And he looks pretty good. But then we're back to you know 69%, 54%. Dalvin Cook, huge game somehow. Didn't seem like it because of the goal line stuffs, and yet nine targets, six for 59 through the air. James Robinson always gets it done. He is great. I, He's great. Yeah, he really is. Watch it. He he is such a fun player to watch because you you're never going to see him not get something extra on every play. Every play he'll break one little thing, bounce it to the right hole. Uh, he, so he's, consistent. He, yeah, I mean, he's he's been absolutely amazing as an undrafted rookie. Chris Carson put together a great game, ended up with a receiving touchdown towards the end. Looked pretty good to me. Mm -hmm. Jason started the week, had 70% uh, of the running back touches. I think Carlos Hyde was irrelevant entirely. Adrian Peterson, two more touchdowns <laughs> with DeAndre Swift out. That's four touchdowns in the last two uh, weeks without Swift. That's fun. Uh, Wayne Gallman, 16 for 135. Hello, Wayne Gallman. Yeah, fantasy, fantasy playoffs, Arizona, how Cleveland. Old, how about Wayne Gallman's backup, Robin? Oh, yeah. Alfred, Alfred, Alfred Morris. Morris. Oh, yeah, you were but so he's excited. Not, but he, how are you going with a Robin joke when he's named Alfred? What's Robin? Oh, he is the, he's the butler. That's a good point. Yeah, that, Bruce that's Wayne and Alfred. That's a really good yeah. point, Mike. His name is Alfred. And you went Robin. <laughs> Wow, I should have gone the butler. Goodness. So, so Bruce uh, Wayne Gallman and Alfred the butler. Yeah. That Good. sounds perfect. Got it done. There is no Batman, but there's still Bruce Wayne and Alfred. But yes, Wayne Gallman against Arizona and then Cleveland. 
Yeah. Okay. The here Joker. We, here we are. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because I really liked it. I was like, all right, there you go. Um, Corey Davis, moving on to wide receiver studs. Corey Davis, Devontae Adams, Justin Jefferson. Jefferson actually more yards, more targets than Adam Thielen in this game. And he's so fun to watch. Yeah, he is. He is outstanding. I mean, this this rookie. I don't. I don't know if everybody realizes. If you don't. If you don't have Justin Jefferson on one of your teams, you you might go up against him every now and then, and and say, "Oh, this is a good player." He's out. He's the wide receiver four on the season as a rookie. Who you know, if you remember the first two weeks of the season, he didn't really do anything. He wasn't a starter at that point. He is as good as it gets in the NFL. I mean, you could put him up there with anybody outside of Devontae Adams and Tyreek Hill. You you say who's great for you could put him there with with Adam Thielen and say who's who's better rest of season, Adam Thielen or Justin Jefferson. It doesn't matter. They're both mm -hmm. phenomenal. Since week three, ninety for fifteen hundred and eleven pace the last four weeks, hundred and eight for sixteen forty eight and sixteen pace for Justin Jefferson heading into your fantasy playoffs, including two straight top 10 finishes. Marvin Jones had a huge week, 8 for 1, 16 and 1. What's funny, Mr. Wright, is that the next guy, T.Y. Houston, I mean Hilton, <laughs> who went uh, 8 for 1, 10 and 1, these are the two players I had to decide between in my matchup with Brooks, T.Y. Hilton or Marvin Jones. Mm, I hope you went Marvin Jones. I didn't. Got, I went T.Y. Hilton. And thought, I thought I made the right six. call. I know. <laughs> but... See, look, it's sometimes in football there are things that are simply irrational. Yes. They you, they make no sense. You don't know why you can continue to bet on it, but TY Hilton against the Houston Texans I I don't know why. When you, and watching him play, the dude was always open. He was he looked like Tough young, catches. He looked like young TY Hilton just getting it done and it's why is this happening now? Yeah, if and and here's I don't the thing. know. If he has What's the, the physical check water in Houston, if he has the <laughs> physical ability to do that, he did it like yeah. yesterday. We all watched it with our eyes. He can still get open, catch balls, be a dominant player. Why can't he do this in any other game? Well, it's going to be tough this week because he has Las Vegas he on should, the schedule. He should be good. Eight for one, ten and one. But Jason, yeah, but that's his that? first 100 yard game since week 16 of 2018. Yeah, but who's so Andrew Luck his quarterback then? Who's yeah. who's he playing two weeks? Houston. Oh <laughs> baby, <laughs> we're back. Houston, you have a problem. Yeah, wow. and it's T. Y. Hilton. That so that's three three. If if he has a good week, this he's week heating up. Las Vegas, I he'll mean, be on fire going into the Houston matchup. You'll have no choice. <laughs> I lost Will Fuller in that league, and now I'm going to have to decide whether to play T.Y. Hilton in the playoffs. Oh, man. And he is – and that's just like a ticking time bomb of you know it's going to explode in your face one of these weeks. Oh, my gosh. I'm going to play T.Y. Hilton two weeks from now. Yeah, I, I'll I'm bet going you, to. I'll bet you play him this coming week, well, too. Well, now I got the bye, Jason. Oh, shut up. <laughs> hey, real quick, I want to go Which back to – Which means I get Houston back-to-back -back for Hilton. I want – that's true. <laughs> I want to go uh, back to Justin Jefferson, obviously. Oh, that's okay. fine with me. Yeah, I know. You, you're madly in love with Justin Jefferson. He, you know, he got that start week three. That's when he started to get more involved. From that point on, he is the wide hey, receiver Justin. three – Ahead of DK Metcalf. Oh, I mean, if you think about oh, how brother. good DK Metcalf has been, how much publicity, he is not as good as Justin Jefferson, nor is Adam Thielen on just total fantasy points scored. Only Tyreek and Devontae are ahead of Justin Jefferson. Be still my heart. <laughs> All right. Uh, Jamison Crowder, two touchdowns. We talked about him and Darnold. They have a connection. They do. Tim Patrick. <laughs> I tweeted this morning, Tim Patrick is a great wide receiver, but he does not have a cool enough name to make the fantasy players believe in him. Yeah. I I stand I stand with you in this Tim I like Tim Patrick. Let, a me, lot. let me tell you the nickname, the best nickname I've heard though. Okay. Because okay. people brought up some names that we can call him. Uh good friend of the show, Jamie Eisenberg, says that we should call him the magician because he makes J Jerry Judy disappear. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Uh two great Touchdowns from Tim Patrick, but Drew Locke is, uh, you know, mm. 
Like dependable's not the word I would associate with him. I would, like if I ne- needed to be picked up from the airport and I called Drew. What are the odds oh, I'm taking an Uber home? It, the one one thousand percent. I would not let Drew Locke watch my dog. Oh my gosh! <laughs> like the easiest job in the world. All you got to do is put some food out and some water. You know he's leaving the gate open. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he's leaving the gate sure. open. Uh, yeah, Drew Locke is <laughs> the absolute worst. Um, <laughs> but with Tim Patrick, so I, just talking about his consistency, if you look, he got injured in week eight. Since that time in the last five games, he's been a top 36 wide receiver every single week with the only exception being when they didn't have a quarterback I mean, you, you right. look at that yeah, game. Yeah, that one doesn't count. That game just doesn't count. No. They, you know, the they had one completion for 13 yards in the game. Um, he, but outside of that game, he's been top 36 every week, and I think he's a reliable flex option. Yeah, hey, he's a good player. Speaking of opportunities taken advantage of, Kiki QT, nine targets, eight catches, 141 yards. If you picked him up, which we told you, pick him up, mm-hmm. see what happens. It's interesting. Now, he's got Chicago next week and then Indianapolis. So I don't know if you have the confidence, but... But this last week was Indianapolis. It was it was a tough matchup already. So if, you, if you're going to get nine targets... Well, I was wrong on Jordan Akins. He only had two targets in this game. Uh, Chad Hansen got a lot of targets. Here's what you know. Mm-bop. Mm, 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 Deshaun Watson's good enough to get outside the pocket over and over and over and over and over again. He's always going. Thank you. I mean, he. It, it we're right there for you to come in with the skip it up. I did say I wanted to make a Hanson joke, huh? Yeah. Uh, yeah. We put it on the T. Yeah, the ball yeah. Fell off. Is a man even Yeah, yeah. There, there we go. go. Chad <laughs> um, but Watson's going to throw the ball. And it's not it's not going to be Brandon Cooks every play. Brandon Cooks does not demand that kind of uh, target share, mm-hmm. physicality. QT made a big mark in this game. Hanson made a big mark in this game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Rashad Higgins. Rashad Higgins. All of, all the wide receivers for the Browns. Jarvis Landry, Donovan Peoples Jones. Jarvis Landry started the week. Ten targets, eight for sixty-two and one. Certainly the more reliable option. Thielen, great game. Hopkins came through, eight for fifty-two and a touchdown. And Michael Thomas, Michael Thomas, nine for one hundred and five. Yeah, and, and that's you know part of why you don't, unless you've got a great option, you don't sit people like DeAndre Hopkins even in tough matchups yeah. against uh, Jalen Ramsey. Yeah, and you're not sitting Michael Thomas, but if you have Michael Thomas round one in the playoffs against Philadelphia with Taysom Hill, be nice to get Breeze back for that game. That's a little uncomfortable. Darren Waller had seventeen targets, caught thirteen oh, passes. Good. I, I did not realize two hundred yards. Two I, touchdowns. Wow. I mean, that's nuts. So what do we think? Darren Waller, pretty good player? Pretty good. Oh, go, go, get you. 200? It's the sixth best fantasy performance by a tight end ever. I, I, I literally, so here's the thing. I'm looking at this number, this stat line, and I can't decide what's the most outlandish part. I, is 200 yards the most outlandish, or is it 17 targets, or is it 13 receptions? Each one of those numbers is so outlandish, I can't even wrap my head around it at the tight end position. And then Travis Kelsey played second fiddle this week with a mere eight for 136 and one. What a loser. Mike Gesicki, nine for 88 and a touchdown. If you double Travis Kelsey's targets, he still doesn't get to Darren Waller's targets. So maybe I know what the most impressive number is to you. Yeah. Mike Gesicki has two straight top 10 weeks and five straight weeks inside. uh, Well, that doesn't matter. Two straight top 10 weeks. Let's focus on that. He is relevant again, and the 11 targets was huge. There is only one play at the goal line for Miami. I don't know if you guys noticed that. Oh, it's I It's called had. a really bad kind of fade throw to one of the three tight ends. Only to the left side of the only end zone. Only to the zone, left side. Jump and up and get it. Never throw it to the back shoulder. Just throw it right at, at the back of the defender yeah. where the wide receiver cannot actually get to the ball right but over it, and over and over and and parker worked. parker got opportunities because yeah. got opportunities dan arnold who i benched for oh, jordan man. akins had two touchdowns two catches 61 yards two touchdowns that's what you get when you mess with the postman <laughs> yeah i'm not doing much with that <laughs> those numbers cole Komet. Cole Komet, seven targets, five for 37 and a touchdown more involved people should know cole Komet's getting a lot more of the snaps now 
Yeah, he's the Bears rookie tight end, and he is their starter now. Is the transition has been made from Jimmy Graham to Cole Komet, and you need to take note of that because Jimmy Graham has mm -hmm. gone down as Cole Komet has gone up. Robert Tunyon, five targets, four for 39 and a touchdown. Always a threat for the big play. That's what we said all week. Jason's start of the week. Tight end four on the year keeps trucking. If you're not playing Tunyon at this point, you are doing it wrong. And if you are, you might be in your fantasy playoffs. And Hawkinson has been necessary each and every week, seven for 84. Solid. Tight end three on the year. I like that we spent so much time wow. on these studs, by the way. There's a lot of, there were a lot of really good performances this week. The tight end three. Yeah. It was a great week. It was just fun. A lot of good performances, not a lot of injuries and, and bad things that happened, great finishes, high-scoring games. Let's have more of this. Some shoes fell off, though. Oh. Yep. Yeah. Stinkers of the Week, presented by Odor Eaters. Wasn't one shoe, wasn't no. it? No. It was both shoes. It was all the cleats in his locker were stolen. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the pants, the, pa he was, the shirt. He was Daffy Ducking out there. Uh, <laughs> Justin Herbert, they got shut out. Yeah. Two interceptions, no touchdowns, under 50% passing. I have it, – it, not that the, the, the Los Angeles offensive line is like you – know, they're the best unit in the NFL or anything, but what happened? What, how, how was Bill Belichick figuring – how – did he figure out how to just completely dismantle the offensive line? Because, look, the, sh the shoes, they fell off this week. I readily admit that. Uh, but what happened to the offensive line? Well, the, the one thing about Bill Belichick and rookie quarterbacks is it's not always – it's what kind of pressure gets into the head of a rookie. And he disrupted Herbert, and it disrupted the entire game plan. I don't, you know, this is nothing to be ashamed about, Justin Herbert. Sure. Like, this is, rookies don't r run off what you've done. You're on the precipice of breaking records. But Bill Belichick, that defense, you're going to have some bad games. Every rookie has bad games. Every you're fine. Every has bad games. And yeah. you've got Atlanta next week. Then you have Las Vegas. If you're leaning on Justin Herbert, I'm not pivoting to the anywhere else. I, I agree. The The upcoming schedule says he should be fine. All players have bad games. And if if I remember anything from quarterbacking in, in fantasy mm -hmm. or in flag football. Right, which is highly relevant. Go on. Highly re well, it's, it's relevant in the sense that when you start to get down and you get down and you get down, then you got to make more dumb throws. you got to stress yourself. You're not going to lean the, on the running game down 28 to nothing. Was it like the gambler uh, a fallacy of gambling you're like uh, i gotta double down now there's not a lot of time left in the game you gotta go deep yeah you made some mistakes also you you talked about the offensive line like it was a problem the offensive line was the best looking thing i've ever seen if you put them next to the special teams <laughs> i have never in the history of watching football maybe in the history of of actual the nfl long before i was born has there been a worse performance by a special teams unit of all time I mean you had blocked field goals you had punts and kicks returned you got her on a jet ski returned a couple yeah. of kicks it was it was if I mean they, they won the game on special teams you say how did how did uh, you know how did cam uh only throw for 95 yards Six, and they 69 score? yards oh my gosh 60, <laughs> 69 yards uh, you know and and they score 45 points special teams Carson Wentz was bad. Mm. Is bad. What else is new? Uh, Derrick Henry in oh. the most impactful this bad performance that you could have. He had a fumble, 15 for 60, no touchdowns. This was, uh, if you didn't watch the game, the beginning of uh, the, the first half of this game, the Browns came out and just, you know, put up 30 – 38 plus, points in the first 38 half. 38 points in the first half. And that's how you can start to game script Derrick Henry out. And I, I don't anticipate, even with a bad defense in Tennessee, I don't think that this is going to be something that happens regularly, being down think, almost 40 points in the first half. You don't think Mike Glennon's going to run it up on him next week? I, do, I, I, you know, I don't think so. Yeah, yeah. Derrick Henry is a, sorry this happened to you. Yeah. Hopefully it didn't cost you your playoffs. And play him next week. However, Miles 
Sanders. What is happening? 10 for 31, no touchdowns, one target. What is happening? Well, when you have a, a chance to play Jordan Howard ahead That's, of Miles Sanders, you got to take it, right? Yeah. Let, let, let's be let's let's help be sympathetic with Philadelphia fans right now, in the sense that there's a lot going r wrong in Philadelphia. Fair? Yeah, yes, that's fair. There's a lot going wrong. There's a coach on the hot seat. Now, this coach decides during the week, I'm going to sit down. I'm going to try to solve the problem. I'm going to try to solve the problem and fix this team. Yeah. And the at the end of the day, what was written on the whiteboard was activate Jordan Howard from the practice squad and then give him significant work. Is and, that right? Uh, well, he it, on top of that, though, was – uh, let my really bad quarterback be the entire offense, and yeah. not and not give the ball to Miles Sanders. Like it's, uh, what is happening? What are you doing? Look, I, this is why I didn't like Miles Sanders. Yeah, time. no, you you were you were spot on on that one. It's, I thought he would Miles. get more work. It's like if you're in a a bog, how fast can you run? Right, like everything around you is bad, and the variables of quarterback changes bad. Let me ask you this. Offensive line problems. If Jalen Hurts is announced as the starter, is it better or worse better. for Miles Sanders? It's irrelevant to me on whether or not I start him. Next week against New Orleans, I'm benching Miles Sanders. <laughs> I'm not playing him. Yeah. I, I don't blame you. I mean, the, the matchup is terrible, and if you look at his fantasy points over the last, you know, since returning from the week nine bye – Week 10, he had 12.5 fantasy points. Week 11, 7.6. Week 12, 5.2. This last week, 3.1. And that was while every single week the snap percentage goes down. Now you've got a horrifically bad matchup. Three running backs are being used. Boston Scott's being used. The The, the hardest part about Miles Sanders is this. Offseason hype was tremendous. Mm -hmm. Validated the hype on his first two starts. And you know what the mental impact of those first couple games is on your offseason season thoughts and beliefs so he validated them all to be a superstar really had a nice five week stretch yeah, when they were just, okay it, it wasn't just the first two weeks I mean it was until he got injured before the bye week he was he was doing great he was great yeah and but but at this point it's just a matter of are you willing to let go of that impression for the future he's not a bad player he's a great player the team is in a tailspin and it makes it difficult to lean on them and if Jalen Hurts is the starter I don't – whatever gets the ball closer to that whole end zone area is better for the team mm -hmm. because it's more opportunities. But do we have any confidence on a goal line carry that Miles Sanders is getting the football? Uh, very minimal. Yeah, I got a little. <laughs> <laughs> I got – I think uh, he minimal. should and he could, but Jordan Howard <laughs> – He should and he could. Jordan Howard could very well go out there and do what he did in Miami, one for one and a touchdown. Yeah, and then New Orleans next, next week is just – with a rookie potentially starting. Now, Doug Peterson, just to update the news, he did come out and say, he said the famous line that coaches say right before they're fired, which is, I got to go to the tape. I got to check out the injuries. I got to see what happened on film before I make a decision on my starter. So, which I believe is the same line maybe Hugh Jackson gave it, it, us. Yep, I when remember Ty, that. When Tyrod Taylor That's was right. handing and, the ball and, off to... And then Baker came in and, and lit the you world on fire and won the game and he's like I gotta go check the tape I'm not sure who was better I'm not playing Jalen Hurts against New Orleans next week either it's fair if there's another you know it, New Orleans defense even without Jenkins this week was outstanding I think it's a no Eagles week mm, okay a no Eagle week I think it's a no Eagle week. He, is that including Dallas Goddard I think it's including Dallas Goddard yeah new quarterback don't know the rapport Zach Ertz active again I think it's a full no eagle well, week. We'll see. Stay tuned. Fly away. <laughs> Austin Eckler is in the stinkers. Yeah. Look, when your quarterback's shoes are off. Yeah. It's, he, he can't get the, the, traction. the footing to, <laughs> to check it down enough. And Yeah, I mean, he was on the field. You're going to start him against Atlanta next week. Yep. Move on. Clyde Edwards impaired. Um, tummy troubles. Zero snaps, yeah. but active. Well, you knew it was a possibility. With uh, with with the illness, I am concerned though. I don't think you can play him in your fantasy playoffs because even last week, Lev Bell seemed to be getting the carries that are associated with higher trust earlier in the game. Yeah, I third mean, down work. 
I, I think you can start Clyde yeah. when he's back. Oh my I'm, I'm, gosh. I'm not worried uh, pretty much at all. What I saw from Love Bell was I thought he was horrifically bad. And then you saw in the the second half of the game, I feel like it was – they're like, yeah, let's stop using Love Bell. Let's get Daryl Williams out here because he's really not good. So if Clyde is uh, – you know, was out with a stomach bug, I mean, the week prior he was great. Yeah. All right. We can – we can be on different sides of that. I'm trying to have some confidence going into my playoffs. I can't possibly have it with. I mean, Clyde. the play, uh, the, you know, the schedule's not pr great with uh, Miami and New Orleans up uh, on the docket, but I, I definitely think he's in play. I don't think he's a a must bench. Yeah, and the yeah, that's fine. So the last time we saw Clyde edwards alaire that game against Tampa Bay, that was his highest running back share of the attempts since Le'Veon Bell came to the team. I, it, like The game opened up, and we were all going, where is Clyde? Lev Bell is on the field. But then at the end of the day, when you look statistically, he saw nearly 70% of the rushes. Yeah, and I'm not going to argue with that. I think if you're going to start a running back from that team, I, every argument can be made for Clyde. But those metrics, percentage of running back share on the Chiefs, they betray a little bit of the situation because it's not a huge share. It's, a, it's Patrick Mahomes. It's handoffs to McCall Hardman around the end and, and Tyreek Hill, it just is a little bit of a lower, a little higher risk variance because yes. the volume isn't there. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I can't disagree with the, the risk. Todd Gurley stinks. <laughs> Man. <laughs> Nothing to see here. Move yeah. on. Less Tavius Murray was not a start. Nope. So hopefully you went with the uh, tried and true Alvin Kamara. Devontae Booker. Not, I mean, not that's sixteen not the for worst. fifty. That's not the worst. He's Devontae Booker. You right. know what you were doing. I you, think you, you. This was a full. Yeah, you're I responsible for your actions. I like. Yeah, no. I mean, the the reality is what happened because it was the Jets and Josh Jacob being out and how Booker had looked in in several weeks in a row. He opened up the locker and there were big boy pants in there. There were. And, there were. And he thought they would fit him. They did not fit him. <laughs> And we thought they would fit him. They did like, not fit him. It, it turns out it was his dad's pants. I mean, he didn't. He I did, didn't think they'd fit him. He did not uh, have a good game. He didn't destroy you, but he certainly did not belong in big boy pants. No, 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 no. Uh, Kareem Hunt. Kareem Hunt had 14 carries. I like that. I don't like the 33 yards. Um, not getting into the end zone for another week. Baltimore next week. It's not my favorite thing. In yeah, the whole wide world. You've got Kareem Hunt. You've been souring every, every week a little bit more and more sour on uh, your outlook towards Kareem Hunt. Yeah, I mean, he's not going to destroy you because he's going to get uh, every single week he's double-digit opportunities, no matter what. But it hasn't been very good for, for the last few weeks, and you're always waiting for the touchdown or the big play. Nick Chubb's great. So, you know, Kareem Hunt's a, a guarantee to get you eight, eight points, but that seems like it's like 8 to 10 right now. And he still has a ceiling. Yes. Uh, he, he has just as, as almost as good as anybody out there to have a multi-touchdown game, which is pretty crazy. Um, it just hasn't been happening lately. Yeah. Yep. Well said. He's a RB2 flex consideration. Ish. Like if you're, if you're looking next week at Kareem Hunt or Clyde, who do you play? That's a, mm, that I mean, Clyde very... against Miami after getting zero snaps or Kareem Hunt against Baltimore. That's a tough call. Yeah, well, and you probably get some more news during the week. That's that's a man who doesn't want to make a call right now, which is totally fair because that's how we do it. <laughs> you don't have to lock him in right now. Yeah. But Jason, who is it? Who's oh, you make your call right now? This uh, is permanent. Uh, Clyde Edwards Lair. Okay. Yeah, final answer. <laughs> <laughs> oh Can man! Can you imagine being on Millionaire? <laughs> like, <laughs> is answering? that your final answer? <laughs> Final answer. <laughs> Final answer. Do do do. All right. Uh, your answer might be Wayne Gallman. By the way, that's the. It might be C. Wayne Gallman. <laughs> D. Alfred Morris. <laughs> no, don't do that. Yeah. Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, not good games. This is again trickle down yeah. effect here. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, spoiler trickle alert. Trickle down shoenomics. Un Unter Henry is also in the stinkers. The the Chargers were not good. Yeah, 20 targets between Allen and Williams, yeah. nine catches on the 20 targets. The Chargers scored zero points. So. Uh, yeah. DJ Chark. Yeah. 
You can't trust a third string quarterback against anybody. He throws it to a few players. Something works out occasionally. But, and even when he, uh, Mike Glennon was trying to hit DJ Chark earlier on in the game, uh, it, you know, it would have got him into the red zone. That ball ended up going off of someone's shoulder into the hands of LaVisca Chenault for a touchdown. The the one of the most ridiculous touchdowns of all time. Uh, I was like, oh, Lavisca got a touchdown. I didn't yeah. see that coming. Neither, neither, neither did he. Did he. <laughs> Even on replay, I uh, couldn't quite track it. It was it was like I didn't understand what happened. The ball disappears, and now it's in the end zone in Lavisca's hands. I was trying to find the stat because DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, both had down weeks. Obviously, Lockett's tough right now because when you fade back to pass and you have Lockett or Metcalf to look at. I mean, Lockett right now, over the last, since week eight, 80 receptions, 770 yards, two touchdowns. That's his pace. Whoa. So, Say that again. <laughs> 80 for 778 and two. That Ooh. is not. That's not great. Good. He's, during that stretch, he's the wide receiver 31. So he's still in play. That would be like a flex option, but that's not what you're hoping you for. You were happy once out of those weeks. You're, yeah, you you were hoping that you had a stud in Tyler Lockett. And the offense has fallen apart for them. Obviously, huge upset by the Giants, who were double-digit underdogs. I, I couldn't find the stat. Uh, maybe, maybe, yep, here we go. Mike Clay. Thank you, Brooks. Seahawks offense scored four-plus touchdowns in each of the first eight games of the year. The Seahawks offense has scored a total of seven touchdowns over the last four games. I have great news for everyone, though. Jets, Jets, Jets. The, the New York Jets are next. Yeah. yeah. To to illustrate your point on the since week eight, Tyler Lockett, uh, he's the wide receiver 31. Mm -hmm. uh, from weeks one through seven, he was the wide receiver two. So it's not been as good. Yeah. So I, but the targets are always there. Yeah. It's just not as, you know, exciting I, as DK Metcalf. I have him on my team. I, I, would not bench him. Yeah, I I agree, it, it, especially against the Jets in your fantasy playoffs. Just difficult. Mm -hmm. I thought I was going to – I was trying to find the stat myself, Brooks, but I realized we talked about Drew Locke in our Slack channel for like <laughs> – <laughs> like, I don't time. know, a really, really long time. I did some scrolling up there. <laughs> so thank you for finding that for us. Hunter Henry, Hayden Hurst. If you were a double H tight end, not a good week. Nope. Austin, if you had an H in your last name, Austin Hooper. I mean, Which Baker was, went crazy, and it was two for 24. Yeah, that one was really upsetting because it was like uh, 400 yards, four touchdowns, and, and uh, Hooper's like, what, no, what about me? No, Henry, Hurst, Hooper, since, since horrible. They took his appendix. Austin Hooper has done nothing. They stole his powers. All right, we do. Give him uh, his appendix back. <laughs> do we have some breaking news? Uh, do we? Breaking news. DJ Moore added to the COVID-19 list. So he was already uh, dealing with the ankle. Now he's been added to the COVID list. I imagine you are not having DJ Moore on the field this week. Well, I mean, we don't know if that's close contact or if he's if he has it. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. So let's not make a conclusion, but that is news that just broke for me in Rapid Park. Right. So. Uh, Evan Ingram, eight targets, four for 32, another was, stink week. It was Colt McCoy. He was targeted. It just that's, that's what I'm saying. It, it, don't just look at the box score. Realize that he was playing with Colt McCoy. Probably going to be. Yeah, that's that's also, the problem. He's played with lots of different quarterbacks and is still hard to start. Thank you, Andy. Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome, Jason. Stinkers of the Week presented by Odor Eaters. Odor Eaters, the best in foot odor defense. Pristine auction. We want to thank them as well. Miles Gaskin signed mini helmet. Just $45. The gas man. A $45 helmet. I'm kind of I'm kind of surprised it made it to forty five dollars. They have a stocking stuffer special auction through Thursday this week, so check it out at pristineauction.com. Use code Ballers. You better use that code if you want ten dollars. Mm. Otherwise, uh, if you want to pay full price, that's fine too. <laughs> just you know, that's a silly thing that's to a do. Silly, silly thing to do. All right, we have two football games tonight. We got another one tomorrow. Oh, man. never stops, Mike. Never Dude. stops. TuesdayNightFootball.com. That's right. Talk to you then. See you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers. 
And Footland, do not forget about Simply Safe Home Security. They are having a huge holiday sale, 40% off the system and a free security camera. Protect your home, protect your family. To get that 40% off Simply Safe plus the free security camera today, visit simplysafe.com slash footballers. That's simplysafe.com slash footballers.